including in areas where Republicans have almost no support. We live in a nation in which conservative Republicans own their own television network. And that is why the work that many of you do in terms of blogging and on the internet is extraordinarily important because you are presenting an analysis of what goes on in America and a vision of where we should go that corporate media does not present. And I thank you very much for that. The other point that I want to make, if some of you have come here to say, wow, we are courageous and we're really on the fringe and we're leading all this stuff, I want to give you some bad news and some good news. The good news is that what most of us believe is exactly what the vast majority of the American people believe. Some of us for years have fought to raise the minimum wage. Some of us believe it should go to 15 bucks an hour. And you know what? Wall Street Journal Paul Wall Street Journal Say her name! 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 One second, one second. I will answer your question, but I'd like to speak for a few minutes. I was told that that... <laughs> a couple more minutes, and then we're going to get... Secondary issue! I was told that... Yeah. Sure. Watch me. A little shorter than that, sir. A little shorter than that. But, go ahead, go ahead. And then we're going to get some specific questions. And the issue... The issue is... Black lives! The issue is... Black lives! It is... Yeah, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Listen, I don't know how black lives, of course, matter. And I've spent 50 years of my life fighting for civil rights and for dignity. But if you don't want me to be here, that's okay. No, sir, we want you to, no, we want okay. you to be my, here and address that and all the other questions. I don't want to out scream. No, no, no. We're not going to, we're not, wait, wait. Wait. All right, the issue that we're talking about, the issue that we're talking about is that we live in a nation which has more wealth and income inequality than any major nation on earth and worse than since 1928. And maybe it's time we did something about it. A, a class analysis does not take the place of a racial We analysis. are living in a nation in which the top one-tenth of 1% owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. Maybe we did something about that. Maybe it is time to have a government which represents ordinary Americans and not just powerful and wealthy campaign contributors. And maybe that is why Maybe that is why it is time to overturn Citizens United and move to public funding of elections. I have not made many promises during this campaign, but here's one I will repeat to you, that any nominee I make to the Supreme Court will have to pass a litmus test, and that litmus test is overturn Citizens United, restore democracy to America. When we talk about issues like Black Lives Matter, let me tell you something. A study just came out a few weeks ago talking about youth unemployment in America, an issue we do not deal with as a nation. And here's what, here's what that report said. What that report said is that if you are a high school graduate and you're white, the unemployment rate is 33%. If you are Hispanic, the unemployment rate is 36%. If you are African American, the unemployment rate is 51%.
And in my view, maybe, just maybe, it is time to invest in jobs and education, not in jails and incarceration. The only way, in my view, that we are going to transform America is to develop a strong grassroots movement, which I call a political revolution. In other words, I can't hear we do not win and transform America when 63% of the American people don't vote. We don't transform America when 80% of the American people, young people, don't vote. So let me conclude my remarks by just saying this. I am probably the only presidential candidate who will tell you that no president, not Bernie Sanders, not anybody else, will be able to achieve what has to be done unless there is a political revolution. We need a mass movement of the American people to say very clearly that enough is enough. This government, this country belong to all of us and not a handful of billionaires. Thank you very much. I want to be able to actually ask you some questions. Okay, so let's just, I, I, want to, I want to get to this point. I heard somebody say, I heard somebody say that black people are dying in this country because of white supremacy. What do you say to that? Black people are dying in this country because of a unjust criminal justice. Okay. I don't... Wait, wait a second, look, wait a second. If, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Continue, sir. Black people are dying in this country because we have a criminal justice system which is out of control, because we have a system in which, as I've just mentioned, over 50% of young African-American kids are unemployed, are out in the streets, and where we have right now, it is estimated that a black male baby born today stands a one in four chance ending up in the criminal justice system. So we what, we need, what we need I'm, to do... I'm about to get to that. I'm I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to transform the economics in America so that we create millions of decent paying jobs. We're going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. We're going to raise the minimum wage. We're going to transform our trade policy so corporate America invests in this country and not low-income countries around the world. That's some of what we're going to do. So let me let me unpack that even more because you talk a lot about. Wait, wait a second. You, you talk a lot about economic inequality, right? I do. But hearing what's happening here, clearly in this country, we have not fully confronted the racist systems and institutions, right? That yes. coupled yes. with economic inequality yes. is getting us to the place that we're at. Yes. How do we do that better? How do we talk about this in such a way? Well, I it's not a question about of talking about it, it's a question of doing something. Well, yes, but what specific proposals? Well. 
specific proposals. You can talk about minimum wage. You talk about minimum wage. Well, specific proposals are for a start. You create an economy where people have decent jobs and decent wages. And that's why we are talking about a trillion dollar program to create 13 million jobs rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. That's number one. Number two, when you talk about the criminal justice system, we need fundamental reform in police departments all over this country. I was the mayor of the city of Burlington. And what we moved toward was community policing, where police officers are part of the community and not seen as an oppressive force. And we've got to do that as well. So I have, I have read about, you know, you, you said that you've been fighting for civil rights, you were there in the march to Washington. Can you point to any legislation in the past 10 years that you've supported um, that have benefited the African American community and communities of color in this country? Sure. Many. Can, can you name a couple? Well, yeah. We, we built, um, in, in the Affordable Care Act, which is providing uh, health insurance to many millions of Americans. Uh, we got a provision in there, a $12 billion provision, which expanded community health centers all over America, hundreds of new community health centers, most of them, or many of them, in low-income and minority communities. That means that millions of people who otherwise would not have been able to access health care are now getting health care, dental care, mental health counseling, and low-cost prescription drugs. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, let, me, let me pivot a little bit to immigration. There's a headline on CNN a couple of weeks ago that said, headline, will Bernie Sanders disappoint? It's on immigration. And the article talked about the fact that you voted against a bipartisan immigration bill sponsored by McCain and Kennedy in 2007 and for an immigration, for an immigration bill in 2013, but expressed concerns about it even right. though you ultimately supported it. So here's my question, right? You said you were worried about protecting jobs with labor unions being a major part of your base. How do you reconcile being pro-labor and being pro-immigration reform? I voted against, when you talk about immigration, I want to ask you a question. Why is it the Chamber of Commerce and all of the big money organizations love the immigration bill? Do you think they're staying up nights worrying about undocumented workers in this country? Why? You tell me. I'm, you know why? I'm not running for president, but go ahead. I you will tell you why. <laughs> I will tell you why. Okay. Because this bill has two major components. Number one, the good thing it has, it says that we're going to take 11 million people out of the shadows and give them dignity mm -hmm. and give them a path yes. to citizenship. Yes, that's yes. That's the good part. That's the good part, yes. And that's what I strongly support. You know what the not so good part is? That at a time when we have millions of kids in this country who can't find the job, what the Chamber of Commerce, the big money interests want, is to be able to bring into this country on guest worker programs low wage workers who will be competing against kids in this country who desperately need jobs. They're going to bring H1B professional workers into this country to lower wages for our high tech workers. Frankly, I don't think that's a good idea. The reason, the reason I voted for the last bill is I got for a billion and a half dollars to create many, many jobs for kids in this country. And that was important to me. So to my view is, of course, we need a path towards citizenship for undocumented workers. What are the deportations? Dividing up families. Of course, I support the DREAM Act. But I do worry. That corporate America and the big money interests, of course, want to bring cheap labor into this country in guest worker programs and continue the race to the bottom, something which is devastating to this country and forcing millions of people in this country to work longer hours for lower wages. Well, but, but looking at that 2013 immigration bill, there's no such thing as a perfect legislation. But for me, looking at that, you're looking at it, you're going... Do we want to spend any more billions of dollars securing a border that will never really be secure? Like, we have spent in this country since... At some point, I should not have voted for the well, bill. Well, my point is, as president, as president, when you hear Congress talk about we need to secure the border, we need to secure... We have spent $100 billion since 9-11 yeah, securing this border. Yeah. What would you say to that? Well, my answer is that to get... And fan, I didn't help write this bill. Yeah. I voted for it. You vote, yes, but I understand. But the people who ended up putting together a bipartisan bill, including 
uh, working with some uh, conservative Republicans, that was their insistence. Okay, not my insistence, that was their insistence. And if you wanted a bill, and by the way, what is very, one of the fault lines of that bill is it ties the path to citizenship with the water. And I think that that does not make a whole lot of sense. But that is the bipartisan bill that was passed. In retrospect, would you have supported it? I did support it. No, would you support it again? If, if knowing what we know now, talking yeah. about border security and all of that, would, would you have supported it? Yeah, I think you've got 11 million people in this country who are living in the shadows, who are fearful, legitimately, of being deported, of families being broken up. This is a not a particularly good bill. But I think that issue is so important that we give some legal protection to 11 million people who are living in enormous anxiety. Yeah, we do not uh, want some. We want all protection for our families, for all well, people and, crossing you know, the let's border. Talk, you, you may, we may want in this room what we want, but you got a United States Congress, which gets back to my first point. If you want a Congress that begins to address the needs of the American people, we got a lot of work to do. This Congress does not do that. Do you support, if you were elected president, looking at Congress, it's doing nothing on immigration. President Obama's executive actions are stuck in the courts. Would you take executive actions as well? Absolutely. No, I support what the president has done and probably would go further. Thousands of immigrants are dying at the border. Executive actions are not legislation. And the answer is that you have a Congress right now, and I hope everybody understands it that you have a Republican Party completely owned by big money interests and too many Democrats are sympathetic to corporate interests. Yeah. That's the reality. And nothing is going to change until you change that, which is what a political revolution So this is, is tied to economic equality. College. At co college costs in this country. Yes. Governor Mali has embraced debt-free college. Do you support debt-free college, including cost beyond tuition? I have gone further than that. Uh, if you look at well, without going into the governor's position, this is my view. We introduced, do I support it? I introduced the legislation. This is what the legislation would do. At a time when we have hundreds of thousands of bright, capable young people who can't go to college for one reason, and that's because their families don't have the income to send them to college, that's pretty crazy stuff. And that is why I've introduced legislation that does two things. Number one, it says that all public colleges and universities in America will be tuition free. Yeah. Number two, number two, what I have said, which is equally important, is that we have in this country millions of people, including, I expect, people in this room who have very, very high college debts. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And here is the insanity of that. We have people who are paying interest rates on their college debts of 8, 9, 10% at the time when you can refinance your home for 2 or 3%. So what we are saying in our legislation is that people with college debt should be able to refinance substantially lowering their interest rates. I'm Stop right, deportation! Stop 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 deport